Baptist Church. FBC is a welcoming and affirming church, a safe space for everyone. We are so glad you could join us today for Youth Sunday, where our whole service is led by us kids. Join us as we worship together. Now we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in singing the centering song, Wade in the Water. The last line for the three verses are, God is going to trouble, God is going to stir up, and then God is going to calm the water. Mm -hmm. Wade in the water, wade in the water, children, wade in the water. God's are going to trouble the water, wade in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. Gods are gonna stir up the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. Gods are gonna calm the water. <laughs> Psalm 8, verses 1 to 2. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven. From the mouths of nursing babies, you have laid your strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies.
if you would join me in a continued spirit of worship and prayer. Um, and if you're joining us uh, in Zoom, I encourage you at this time as we pray to um, offer up the names of those uh, on your heart uh, into the chat. And similarly on Facebook Live, uh, you may do so. And we always remind you to, to, to stick to first names since, uh, since this goes out over Facebook. But if you would, let us, uh, let us continue in this spirit together. Oh God, we uh, receive the gifts of, of joy uh, from, from these kids, your children, and we find the hope from, from their lives. And in the midst of all of our various struggles and experiences and perspectives, it is so good to be centered in your hope and joy It is so evident in their lives. This morning, uh, we also give thanks for our church and the ways that you continue to knit us together and hold us together and keep us connected. And uh, we do so by prayer and by worship and so many other opportunities throughout the week to reach out to one another. We thank you for this morning, this service, this opportunity to worship you together, to learn from you, from our little kids and you. Oh God, as we give thanks, we also are mindful of the incongruencies in life, and the challenges that so many are facing. And so this morning, we want to lift those up, those names that we carry on our hearts. We may name aloud, we may hold on to, oh God, we know that you hold those within yourself and you hold those individuals, your children, close. So this morning, oh God, we pray. For Don and Judy, Patty, Karen, Clara, Alex, Ben, Jack, Wendy, Carol, Kim, Margaret, Ashley, Tim, Muffy, Allison, and Robbie, Julie and Judith, James and Jane, Syl, Liliana and Craig, Bob, Brent, Sandra, and those who are experiencing unemployment, for all the others, oh God, that you know, that we know, may you receive these names, may they receive your comfort and peace. We believe that you are always with us. May they know your presence in these times, we pray. Amen. The Word of God, Mark chapter 4, to 35 to 41. Near that day, when evening came, Jesus said to them, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats followed along. The Air Force winds arose and waves crashed against the boat, so that the boat was swamped. But Jesus was in the rear end of the boat, sleeping on the pillow. They woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? He got up and gave orders to the wind, and he said to the lake, Silence! Be still. The wind settled down, and there was a great calm. Jesus asked them, Why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? Overcome with awe, they said to each other, Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. What do you think the disciples were most afraid of? Uh, the waves, definitely. Definitely the waves, okay. Well, I think they were afraid of that they were just, that he was never going to 
wake up, I guess. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid about, that if well, Jesus didn't wake up. And why would they be afraid of that? Because the whole thing would be swamped and everyone would die. Um, well, I think the disciples were most afraid of drowning on the boat. It was pretty emphasized during the story that they were kind of like panicking in the boat when like all the winds were like acting crazy and when when the boats were were was beginning to get swamped so all of them were just worrying that they were going to drown they were going to die because the weather was not really on their side i you know we just had this hurricane pass through the gulf of mexico and uh i think that the winds and the rain and the storm were scary for them and they're in a boat and a lot of people uh, on the Gulf Coast were in homes on dry land but to be in a boat uh, in a big storm maybe not as big as a hurricane but still a big storm would be really unsettling and, and terrifying um, and I wonder if there was something deeper uh, attached to that fear of drowning that was about what choices they had made and whether it was worth it in the end and to see it all kind of wrap up like this would have been disappointing um maybe uh fear inducing uh, but either way i think the fear of, of drowning was was primary but maybe uh, on a deeper level it was um more existential about about who they uh, chose to be with their lives How did Jesus calm the storm? Jesus calmed the storm by simply asking the winds and the and the waters to be calm, to 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 be still, and to stay silent. He just simply asks asks them. Uh, and in in our version uh, today, in our translation, it has exclamation points: silence, be still. Uh, he silences and calms the storm with words by saying waves or wind or whatever stand down or and calm down and yeah he's like he's kind of magical yeah that's why that's how he could calm the storm yeah because he's kind of magical How did Jesus calm, calm the fear of the disciples? What's a fear? A fear, like something afraid. How did he make them not afraid anymore? Because he calmed the wind down. And the ocean down. Yeah. You know, I actually don't know that. Um, but probably, like, um, by trying to use his powers, maybe it would make him do it. It, I, I don't know if the disciples settled down and experienced great calm themselves uh, because Jesus then asks, why are you frightened? Um, don't you have faith yet? Uh, didn't ask why were you frightened? Um, and maybe this is just the translation I have, but that we have. But uh, after that, then it says the disciples are overcome with awe and they say to each other, who is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. So um, <clears throat> it, it seems that Jesus calmed, uh, or calmed the, the wind and the storm with words and then more attention and presence and words, uh, comfort uh, with the disciples, inter engaging with them, hearing their fears, um, seemed to calm them down. Um, first of all, they calmed... Um the fears of the disciples by calming the waters and the winds and then asking them if they have faith. Don't you have faith yet? And I think that question really calms them into reflection and really pulls out the inner faith in them that they've been locking away with realism in the real world when the whole time when God is on your side, everything can be victorious, you know? Amen. Well, what are you afraid of? Well, uh, nothing. You're not afraid of anything? Nope. 
I'm just having good that. Yeah. My fears are when I have my dirt bike, I mean my electric dirt bike, I, when I go downhill very fast, I when it's all charged up and I'm uphill, I just go blazing down. So, so what are you afraid of? My biggest fear is um, probably like going on a helicopter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fears that I have now is the world is becoming a lot more dangerous. So I'm just like afraid of what's happening in the world will end up in my home. And other fears that I have are like simple fears, common fears like spiders in the darkness. And yeah, that's pretty much what my fears, you know. Yes. Other people yeah. are afraid. I know some people that are afraid of cla that are claustrophobic, afraid of small spaces. Other people are afraid of heights, you know. Other people are afraid of death and other fears like that. I think I want to start with other people first. Um, I think that most people are like the disciples. They fear dying um, in some way or, or in certain ways. I think they fear being alone. I think they fear harm coming to the people they love. I think they fear not having enough. Um, there's so much hurt and pain in the world, they don't want to experience that. I don't think most people want that for others either, but I think they're afraid of it happening to themselves. And, it, um, and I think that's why so many of us look to so many different things for a sense of comfort, whether it's a lot of money or a, a big retirement or um, multiple homes or uh, cars or um, gadgets and technology. <clears throat> we, we look to all of these to make us feel good because we're afraid of not having enough. But I think on a deeper level, it's not just about being afraid of dying or not having enough, but it's about um, being afraid of not being enough or not um, making a difference, not um, not having a purpose or not fulfilling that purpose. Um, and it doesn't even have to be this grand purpose, but just if we're only here once, um, was it worth it? Uh, and, and so similar maybe to those disciples was, were their choices worth it? Um, I wonder for myself um, how I live, is it worth it? And so my fear, I think, um, underneath most other fears, the deeper one is, is, is about meaning. Can God calm our fears? How do you think God does that? Most definitely, God can calm our fears because God can help us open, open ourselves and our hearts to our inner faith. And if we keep and maintain faith throughout our life, anything can go our way, you know? Because God will always be our side if we have our faith close to us. Do you think God can calm our fears? Definitely, maybe. Um, yeah, probably. So mm -hmm. yes, that's a yes. By just using his powers. So. Can God calm our fears? I guess so, yeah. You think so? Yep. How would God calm our fears? Well, I don't know. Because he knows, knows about his feelings. Yeah, he knows about his feelings? Yeah. And our feelings? Yeah. Do you think that God could help you not be afraid? Yep. Even me. Uh, yes, I do think that God calms our fears. Um, I, I don't believe that fear is always a bad thing. It's just a normal thing. It's just a human thing. We're... The way we've evolved, we were created and then evolved is 
um, to, to help protect ourselves. And so we have uh, these mechanisms for fear. Um, so when I hear Jesus saying, don't be afraid, or angels saying, don't be afraid, or um, Jesus asking, why are you afraid? I don't read it. I used to read it as um, a, a bad thing, like, that I was um, not having good faith, because faith is often attached to that. Um, and now I, I don't I don't hear it that way. I, I hear it, uh, and I mentioned this in a sermon uh, recently that I, I think it's more about uh, like a parent trying to help a child um, continue to learn and grow and when it comes to faith uh, you know for so many of us we're still learning we should always be I think and so we're always going to be um, taking um, moments as lessons as learning uh, opportunities and so I, I think of, uh, you know, riding a bicycle or something. We, those of us who learned how to ride a bike, we were afraid. We had training wheels, we had tricycles, um, we had uh, an adult or someone bigger than us who would help us get started. And, and uh, it probably is better if we didn't learn on a hard pavement, but uh, that adds to the to the fear. Um, but the fear was normal. And it's, it's why, instead of why did you have fear, it's um, more more about what is causing that fear, I think, is, is the deeper question. And so when I think about this question, um, does, does God, can God calm our fears? I think yes, absolutely. And I think a part of that process um, and, and thinking of how God does that is for us to be aware of our anxiety and our fear that aren't bad, they're real, and they're normal. But when we feel it, instead of clamming up, instead of locking down, instead of getting into protective mode and shutting everyone out, recognize that's there and, and ask yourself, what is sort of that, that pearl inside the clam that's making me want to protect? What is it that I'm afraid of and what, um, what's there? And in that process, I think that the grace of God is a part of, of our processing in that. And here's why I say that, because... Uh, in the boat, uh, Jesus is in the boat, and Jesus is asleep through the storm. And I don't understand that part. If it was, if it, maybe he was faking it, I don't know, just to to uh, freak him out. Who knows? Um, but what I hear in that, or what I find in that, is that in any storm um, that I experience, uh, whether it's the upheaval in society or around uh, white supremacy and racism and systemic injustice. And the parts of me that feel threatened by having to change and learn new things, um, and, and instead of locking down and saying, no, uh, I don't want to, that's all wrong, uh, unfair, um, I want to ask myself what that is. And in doing that, I think of Jesus in the boat with me. And so that storm is battering and threatening me. And in the middle of it is Jesus right there, unafraid. Uh, a non-anxious presence, ready to help when we're ready to ask. And so, um, and even when we're not, I think. And so with words, Jesus calms the storm and the seas. And I think with words and reflection, uh, we can begin to, to learn and understand uh, what some of our anxieties are. I think therapists are also gifts from God too, I should say. But um, I think that that's often how God calms our storms. Because last thing I'll say, um, when you look back at the beginning of this chapter, all throughout, Jesus is t telling parables. And he keeps coming back to this phrase about um, the word is planted, the word is grown, and all this kind of stuff. And, and so then you get to this, and it's the words itself that calm the storm. Um, and so I think there's something about the word, Jesus as the word, um, that that is is rooted deep within us, ready to to continue to help us to grow in our faith, uh, and fears are a part of that. Those are sort of the leaves and uh, of our faith in some ways, uh, and doubts too. Um, but we keep growing through that. So that's I. So yes, uh, that was the long answer. Can God calm our fears? Yes, and how I think by being present with us uh, through through it and listening and engaging with us.
Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Brent and Pastor Dominic and Pastor Caleb and Pastor Raquel for those beautiful reflections. Thank you to all of the kids who were involved in leading us in worship today and to all your parents. I know that everyone will agree that that was a, a big blessing for all of us. And we also know that you, uh, all of you kids and parents have a lot going on right now with school getting ready to start. And so we wanted to also give you a special blessing today. Um, if Amy, if you want to pull that up. And this is a blessing for everyone who's going back to school, not just kids and parents, but also administrators and teachers and staff members of all kinds. So I'll invite you, um, congregation and friends who are watching to read this along with me. <laughs> you, I'm going to read the, um, the light print and I'll invite you to join me in the bold print. This is a prayer for back to school. At the start of the school year, students and teachers, administrators and staff are beginning something wow. new. New things can be exciting. New things can be scary. New things can be wonderful. New things can be confusing. God, you are always with us. You are with us when things are exciting or scary or wonderful or confusing. You are with us every day and all the time. God, please help those who are going back to school, virtually or in person or both, to feel your presence and know that they are enough. Amen. Amen. Now, I did want to let the kids know, normally at our, our service like this, we have backpack tags and some special things for going back to school. Um, but this year, I'm going to be dropping off blessing bags uh, late this week and, and early next week that you'll have uh, to do your own kind of blessings uh, at home. And one of the things I wanted to give you a special preview of is this story Bible. Uh, each family is going to get one of these story Bibles, and we'll be um, using it throughout the semester to uh, do some cool spiritual formation for kids in some new ways. So keep, a, keep an eye out for that. This is called All of Us, and it's by Shine. Um, and the next slide, I think, will show you each of the stories that are included have... Um, what they have just the text from the Bible like this, and it has bolded when people are talking, so you can kind of read it like a reader's theater if you want to. And then they also have on the next slide each story in a shortened version, and it's kind of like a graphic novel. So I'm really excited about these. You can read it in either version or both, and then I'll have some prompts to send home with you each week in an email. Sometimes we'll do Zooms together, and sometimes I'll send videos. Um, for you all this semester. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be in your blessing bags and those will be coming soon. So if your address have, has changed, please let me know if you're one of our Woo kids or youth. Um, I think that's it for the, that's all, that's all I'll say about the blessing bags. The rest can be a surprise. There are going to be some goodies in there for caregivers as well. So watch out for those. Um, but we also wanted to invite you to be a part of our church life throughout the week. Um, so there are lots of ways you can do that even though the screen is blank right now. <laughs> there are. <laughs> I see the screen that's blank. Oh, it's not blank anymore. See, there it goes. So one way that you can partner with us is by continuing your faithful giving. Thank you so much for doing that. There are so many ways that your gifts are going out into the community and the world um, to make a big difference. Um, yes, so I'll say a little bit more about that after we get off of Facebook Live, some exciting things happening this week. Um, but thank you for your continued giving. You can give by mail or online at fbc-work.org. There's an online giving tab at the top of the page. And uh, the other thing to remind you is that we are going to continue our online worship through the end of November. And we'll kind of be revisiting that um, as the situation changes and, make, and coordinating council will make a new decision for the following quarter. Um, once we get closer to that. So Brent's talked a little bit about that in his weekly emails. You can go there for more information. Uh, 
If you would like to be a phone buddy or to have a phone buddy, let us know. That's just a way we're connecting congregants to check on each other and make a new friend. We also have our churchwide engagement group that happens every Wednesday night, 6 o'clock p.m., and we are working on how we can put our anti-racism learning into practice with some practical steps. So we hope that you'll all join us. You don't have to have come before. Everyone's always invited. Another exciting thing coming up this uh, next month is Nevertheless She Preached. This is a conference that is celebrating women in the pulpit. And this is something that I co-founded a few years ago uh, with another pastor friend. And you can find more about that online, but basically there's a, gonna be a live online free Facebook event on Sunday the 20th from five to 8 p.m. And I hope you'll tune into that going to be fantastic. And then the following two days, there will be working groups, kind of like workshops that you do need to register for, but it's a $25 registration to have access to all six working groups, featuring people like a friend of FBC Wu, Amy Butler, who was here with us last year, and uh, many other really great uh, preachers and scholars and activists. Let's see. Sign up for the church email list if you're not already on there, fbc-work.org backslash connect. And I'm very sad to say that this week is the last uh, week that Joshua and Jana are officially with us. I know that we'll make sure we rope them into coming back sometimes, but we are we have been so grateful for to you, Joshua and Jana, for all that you've uh, brought you and done. Because your face is in the screen, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let Brent say a few words here, since I've got a little helper that's not too helpful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so we are uh, indeed um, so grateful for, for your leadership, Joshua and Jana. Um, Jana, you've been going up to the church regularly to record in so many different spaces uh, on different instruments, and it has helped uh, to offer some continuity for us in how we worship. And Joshua, you've brought beauty uh, with your leadership as well. And I'm thinking back, uh, we were talking this morning, um, that you two started at the end of January uh, and beginning of February, and so it was a very different thing that you signed up for, and you have been so very flexible along the way, and even extended through the summer uh, for us, and adapted, and we have uh, been so fortunate because of that, and I hope that um, that that you have also uh, found some blessing in this uh, as well, so I know they'll be around at, at coffee hour for a little bit if you'd like to extend your your appreciation to them and it's not they're not going to be too far away uh after all but and then if i can one more thing pastor natalie i just want to say thank you to you uh you put so much uh creativity and effort into making this service so beautiful it's such a beautiful gift for us and uh the, the reflection questions and the art show and the just all of it i can't i don't want to leave anything out so i'll stop but thank you so much and thank you to the woo kids and woo youth as well it was just such a such a gift this morning Thanks. It was super fun. And I couldn't have done it without the amazing parents and caregivers who got all of the, the great footage. So thank you to all of you who participated. Thank you, kids. You were so amazing. We have one more kid uh, who is about to lead our benediction and then stick around for the postlude after that. As you go throughout this week, may God's love surround you. May Jesus' life empower you. May the Spirit's present encourage you. Amen.
that, that was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And it, it was, uh, it just captured uh, so many of the emotions uh, this morning and over these past few months together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we want to say thank you for joining us to Facebook Live, uh, friends, and uh, we wish blessings and a good week uh, to you as we end our live stream. And then uh, also the recording. And... <laughs>